the first thing I want to do is let, I know about your own project. I mean, talking book, the project you do together, which is a prelude student film soundtrack, isn't it? So, can you tell us a bit more about it? Okay. Yeah, something that uh, Jared and I started doing, I think that we put out a record, we did something together uh, in 2011. We'd known each other for a couple of years already. And it was kind of an experiment to see what could happen if we kind of approach music from different sides and what would happen if we did something together. And, you know, it worked. And, and we, we've done two records now. Um, and this yeah. uh, soundtrack that we're doing is is basically, it's talking book without... Uh, Dominic, who's who's the third member of the talking book. So, so when you say yeah. you, you pro, you're coming to music from completely different angles, I guess with you, I mean you do a lot of projects, Bill, and there's so many of them. I can't remember them all, uh, but mainly known for playing Faith No More, etc. And Jared, right. you, can, you come from more of a, a ambient background. Was that fair to say, uh, or am I generalizing uh, here? A little bit of generalizing, but at the time, well, I I do another kind of pop. 80s project kind of thing like library music but a lot of the stuff that i first met bill doing was like sound collage sort of stuff whether it was like ambient it was just sort of like it wasn't it was just anything basically and so that's how uh we basically got started was was i brought some stuff to his studio that was i, I you know kind of like these slow down recordings of of um of like exotica records and stuff but really slowed down and it just had this uh really amazing slow and just deep textured vibe and that's sort of where we began with like oh maybe we can turn this into something because you could always add stuff on top of that or just or just dub them out a little bit and so that's how it started and in a way it was kind of like it's it's kind of like what we did for this project. I mean, it's not much different in 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 a sense. It was it's all about textured sound and slightly melodic, um, you know, not just noise music, not just ambient, but more just kind of in between. And so, yeah, that's sort of how we came together, and we've been doing it kind of like that for the last uh, since we started, I guess. So more of a musical concrete sort. Of yeah, so it's like a bit of concrete Absolutely. meets sound collage, but also um, it's film music because there's no singing really, but it's not like straight, just ambient, you know, like there's a lot of layers of different versions of ambient music. And so uh, like the last real record we did had a lot of like totally different parts. It had acoustic guitars and... Uh, almost like a folk rock thing at points, but this, for this project, it was pretty straight, like film sort of textured. Uh, I don't know how to explain some of the music, just very like moody music, but with, with, with melodies and stuff, you know, so it's not just sound for sound, you know, it still have song structures and, and stuff like that. That's something that I know the three of us, or at least Bill and I are very like strong about is having some sort of sense of song and not just have, you know, just sound, which is fine too. But I think we just hear things like we want to have something that you can kind of lock yeah. into and listen to. Oh, well, this, I'm just going to say about this thing. Uh, this is the first time we, either of us have done a feature, like a full film as a score. Yeah. So yeah, we kind of, you know, there was a, it, this was, a, this was our first attempt and, and, so it was a little bit different because you need uh, more content and you need to hold back a little bit and support the yeah. visual that's happening. Yeah. And we hadn't really been, we've been kind of creating, we were just creating the whole thing before, you know, right. including the visuals because the visuals was coming out of the sound. Yeah, exactly. And this was better because yeah. I got to like see what's happening on the screen and actually be way more minimal than I've ever been before musically. And it's sort of like a blueprint now a re blueprint of, 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 of coming back to, to being really minimal in my, in my approach to um, experimental sound, abstract music. So it, it was a great opportunity and experience to do it. It was very it, natural. It's, it's interesting. You say makes the music more minimal. Is that because the visuals provide their own brush strokes as well? Exactly. So you, don't need, you don't need to paint the Absolutely. whole picture. Exactly. Totally. And when you're, and when you're not working with it, for me, I always feel like I need to fill the space. And I also worked, actually, one of the things that helped is I worked 
on some of the track, uh, some of the scenes with the sound that was provided from the movie. Uh, and I kind of worked off some of those cues. There's a lot of silence in the movie, but still has sound underneath it. Um, outside folly, not folly, but like just outside ambience and just little clinks and clanks and, and little bits of talking here and there. And like those things were became part of the, the music. And so when I took away the, the music from the film, it was, it was fine, but it's like with it, it just kind of, it was even better. So it, it'll, and, and, and because of that, now when I write that kind of music, I have to have something underneath that sort of reminds me of like, life going on underneath music and i think it's funny because bill i remember when we started a long time ago he was like um these sounds are cool but we should take these and put them into a place you know using some kind of reverb or something artificial just to put it somewhere and it's it's always stuck with me and this was like the first time i really got a chance to like employ that sort of method of uh and it worked i think so i mean when you're working on projects uh before the film would you start with an atmosphere? Would you, be, you know, you think, well, I want to create something that creates a certain atmosphere, or would you just have interesting sounds and create the atmosphere? Yeah. Which way around? Which way around is it? Uh, like, you know, for me, it's like I'll look at the scene and then I just kind of like, I kind of just, I have a whole huge library of, of different sounds, and I'll just kind of throw them in and just kind of test out which ones kind of work, and then when I get one, I kind of work with that. And just see what things are happening and uh or i'll resample something and play it lower and just you know add some reverb and delay and just hold one note and just let it do its thing and that's sort of how i approach this one and, and yeah it was fun I mean, actually no it, I, you know yeah. i did do that but i also sent i asked i i also sent our director a bunch of just demos of just i didn't see anything yet i just threw some demos together like just real really stripped down sounds and she really liked those so that kind of gave me an idea like okay i'm going to keep this really really minimal for the most part without being you know completely background boring so and is that the same working process for you bill no i i mean i'm jared comes from a much more uh abstract uh background of, you know and a lot of experience that where i'm kind of a linear guy i came from the rock world even though I've always listened to experimental music. Um, but that's not what I did in, as far as my work. Uh, so my tendency is to try to have an idea and flesh it out and start with an idea. And something like this, it really, I hit a, a bunch of walls in the beginning because I was trying to make something rather than listening to what, what, what was needed. And when I stopped pushing and I just made it more of a process of discovery, it, it went much better. So yeah, so because you have a more of a formal rock background, would you be sitting there just trying trying to make a riff that went with the, the uh, or a song or something? Something, yeah. something like that. Something like that. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, there's. I mean, there's definitely times when that works, but um, it's it was really I really had to lose a lot of my uh like training that's become kind of subconscious you know like that i just naturally do and kind of let some of that stuff go because it just wasn't right for the situation so more of a for you it's more of a deconstruct absolutely i mean for me yeah. working with jared it's like to me it's like working with clay like yeah. uh you know when you're in a band you're building architecture you're building a house you know with a song and, and with this you're working with clay and, until, and you know when it's ready, when it's ready, how it feels. Uh, it's it's completely different, actually. Yeah. Weird. It took me a long time to get my head around thinking like that. And I'm not sure yeah. I'm 100% there. I, I, <laughs> I'm, and better. I'm, I'm better than I was. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm learning it every day because it's not something you can learn. It's really like rock is something you can learn in a way because you, you're playing with other dudes or whatever. And you kind of like, but like this is a very... I find this a very like solid, like very uh, insular sort of way of working. And also like the music, like most guys out there are just one dude or maybe two. Um, and I think a lot of times it is like you, you, you build this thing and then you end up just throwing bits away, you know, and then you just have like what's left and, you know, you could take little bits and kind of bring them in, but it's really about stripping everything away, but making the sounds that you do have interesting enough to hold people's attention um and i like soundtracks because each part is pretty short 
right so like i actually wrote to film so some of the some of the tracks were like 40 seconds and that's it so when we rate when we wanted to make this record i actually had to go back and like stick on another minute and expand it so um yeah it's just a different way of working and uh i don't know i feel it's just it, but it's actually almost harder to produce in a way because it has to feel right and it's and um yeah it's it's a trick it's it's tricky but you know it's, it's, it's kind of you have these existential crises because it doesn't feel right you know and you don't know yeah. why and you you know um the thing the thing about this too about this film i've known this director for about 10 years before and she's serbian uh she's moved to norway but one of the reasons she moved to norway is because just the dysfunctionality of living in serbia through all the things that they've been through and this film was kind of a, a way, it's a very, very personal film about just kind of like the dysfunction that's gone through her family through generations. And she's interviewing her grandmother and it's all very personal. And and, and so there's a little bit of like responsibility of doing her right, because this is kind of, she's kind of putting her, her life out on, you know, right on the, on the, on the film. And um, the fact that she was really happy with what we did uh, was a real relief, I think. And I think it was Jared too. And, and, with, that's what really kind of spurred us to say we should make a release out of this because it's yeah, one of these sure. things where I think everybody was happy and it, the ideas kind of gelled together with what she was doing visually. She completely connected with what we did to it. And it just seemed like a really successful thing that uh, on a personal level for all of us, you know, Definitely. and that's, that's kind of the point of what we're doing. Yeah. I mean, I mean, obviously she's got a strong story to tell. And Absolutely. Absolutely. But do you tell a story with the music or do you just kind of harmonize with her story? Or are you almost even more ambient? You kind of detach from the story, you just reflect certain atmospheres that are in the film. Hmm. That's a good question. What I, what I can see from this, I, what I can see is that she's got certain feelings that she's got that are very uh that um I don't know if it's an aesthetic or it's just a, a mindset, but somehow where we approach things is how she feels. And there's a, there's a convergence there that's happening. I mean, uh, when, when you said you said, obviously you sent the music to her and you work with her, but how much would she get involved in the music? Say, can you do a bit more like this or a bit more like that? Or, um, Actually, just, I mean, she, I would, yeah. No, I was going to say like a lot. Okay. So the first one, I, I did like a bunch of scenes uh, because it would, they were kind of connected with uh, the scenes with her father. So I did all these scenes uh, with similar sounds and stuff like that. And I did a bunch of other things and I sent it to her just kind of like, all right, this is my first sort of like, this is my first take. You know, I spent time on these, but I kind of just like put my, just put it out there. And she really didn't give us much feedback in terms of like, oh, can you make this 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 it was very like little bits of inf a little bits of edits but like i think she totally dug what we did and which we got lucky because um i feel like if there was a lot more nitpicky yeah. stuff i would have got i would have gotten a little bit <laughs> frustrated and just like Ugh. no but it's true right like she didn't really say like yeah. i think we just under i i don't know i understood the images which is so weird because bill and i you know when we first made our first record and throughout the years we always thought of images and um of, of of our music and this one was like it was like she handed us this like slate of just amazing images to work with and, and it's true and the images were amazing already the content was really strong the content was yeah. i mean you could look i mean i you could you could take like 50 of these stills from the movie and put them in a in a gallery and you know, like a photographic gallery and, and people would be like, wow, that's really, it was just very, just beautiful stuff. And, 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 but also like she used different film stock for shots. I think she used diff 16 different types of film and she made some of the film her by hand. So like it yeah. just, the way I reacted to the, I just went, I just jammed and then just kind of like, jam, you know, kind of cut things down and just made them orderly and she dug it. So I was like, okay, you know, and I think, if she was going to ask for more like musical things, I think that's where I might have gotten a little like a little less. It would have been a little less fun for me. And but Bill, on the other hand, would probably have excelled in that case because that's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't We're know. Going back to the familiarity. Yeah. yeah. How how deep do you have to go into the story of the film? I and mean, obviously, the films there, and you've got the images 
that you could play straight off them. You don't even need to go into the the backstory. But did you actually get really involved in the backstory? Do you speak to her a lot about what she's think about each scene? Then right even deeper in, into the former Yugoslavia and Serbia, you know, uh, thinking about that as well. Uh, she wrote little notes about each scene, like not much though. I mean, I had subtitles on the film, so I was able to read it. Um, but I didn't want to like play off of the 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 sub, you know, off of the the script, if you would. Like, I didn't want to do. I wanted to keep it like just my own thing that I had going on back there. You know, like there's a scene with her father just like walking through the forest, talking about what he did. He's basically rereading his journal, and he's just talking about like the day that he had and what he did and this and that. It's like, what are you supposed to write to that? Nothing. It's just like, it's just beautiful images and it's sad. And, but you want to kind of keep it just back there. But um, I don't know. It's like, it, it it's just, I, I, I see colors a lot when I work. So like, I see like greens and blues and stuff like that. And so that's kind of like, it's, you know, it's subdued. It's just, but like there's crunch from the forest. There's, sounds from the, the animals and stuff so that's you know without getting cheesy about it but that's how i really like kind of wanted to do it i just jammed and just let things go and uh luckily she she dug what we did and and when i watched the film later i you know i could i was like wow that worked totally you know i and i've been spent a lot of time like in ex Yugoslavia, so i was kind of a little more familiar with the content but it's funny how you know, even, I mean, they have a certain black humor out there and a lot of things. I mean, we could have made this music lighter. I mean, and she wasn't giving us any addition. I was asking, like, I mean, do you want this to be kind of funny? I mean, you you can almost do that and it could almost, you know, put a, it, it's still a dark film, but it could have a kind of, you know, a, a different kind of slant right. to it. Like you have a lot of power to take it in a place, but you you don't want to take it in a place that she doesn't want you to go, you know? You want right. to kind of respect that first. And she wasn't completely like 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 she wasn't very specific about it and i think that we really kind of just went with our gut and we just just were really lucky we hit the bullseye on it well i remember mm -hmm. when we first started she, you she was mentioning some kind of like not at all experimental music really right she was saying like she was right she was torn yeah it was like weird serb i don't remember you I, I can't remember what it was but it wasn't it wasn't at all electronic -y, like it was no like old punk bands from the 80s and stuff yeah, yeah. oh uh, yeah, like yeah. serbian bands yeah exactly yeah yugoslavian yeah, yeah. bands back then yeah 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 a great scene actually they had a great 80s scene in uh yugoslavia former yugoslavia yeah so yeah, yeah so um so a lot of it's instinctive then. It's just you just uh you you watch a scene and you basically find the first thing you could sort of think of, you trust yourself enough to that would be the instant reaction. Or is it, or sometimes can it be like mm, that's not quite right, that's not quite right, and um, you're kind of threading your way there. Not the ones I did. The ones I did, I kind of just went with the like darker sort of textural themes. But there are there are a couple things I did that are kind of light and airy. There's a couple scenes like now I'm thinking about it. There are melodic and and kind of like warm, but there's nothing straight. Like there's not much like musical musical moments, you know, like with like much you know multiple composition happening or anything that you would consider like. And I she just went with it and and she liked it conventional. So I just, yeah. yeah, I just conventional. I just kind of went with it with. And 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 that's it. And and I think if she wanted other stuff, she would have told us, and we would have done it. But with this, it just was like yeah. carp. It was like a huge music video for us, and, or something. You know, not to, <laughs> not to not not to be like it's not really, but you know what I mean. It was just like this huge palette of just like colors and textures to work with and put image uh, to put sound to, and it was like. I mean, I think that we'll be really lucky if we ever get to do this kind of free, have this kind of freedom again with another uh, filmmaker. But maybe not. I don't know. I don't know how it works because, uh, yeah. But I mean, would you be able to play this? Live? This was our is first it shot. Is it What's that? This? Ooh, good question. That's it... a good question, actually. That's a good question. What's that? Playing it live. I, I, lo I love. I've we... seen people do soundtracks oh, live yeah. to the film. 
which I've I think, seen it. I honestly, if we got to play uh, some gigs again, I think we could do some older stuff, but then do like a a bunch of these and just have the movie playing like the scenes. And I think people. I mean, would, that would be cool. It would look amazing mm-hmm. on a big, you know, on a stage with 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 visuals behind us, and it would be it would be incredible, um, for sure. Yeah, I've seen it. It takes some mapping out though. Oh yeah, yeah of course you have to figure out what. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it to be a big puzzle to to be able to be spontaneous and and be live with these things that we kind of took a long time to put together in the first place. It creates yeah, an amazing I mean, amazing dynamic though, you know, when it's actually live with it. You kind of live oh, yeah. also and suspended out animation at the same time. Yeah, yeah <laughs> totally. We could stretch things out, and I I mean I think it would be pretty sick, but uh. We'll talk about that another day when. <laughs> so this time. this this is an ongoing project. I mean, are, are you looking to do another film soundtracks or going back to just doing the ambient uh, albums or you know uh, or this, what? The for, same director has a movie coming actually called uh, Motherhood: A Horror Story. <laughs> that's uh, she's working on, I, but I haven't got any details lately. But I think she wants us to do that. Yeah, it's uh I would be I would be honored to do that cuz the 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 premise of the story is really I mean it's it's really awful but it's probably ends up being beautiful. I don't know, but it it feels like it's something we we would get into and I would love to work with her again. Um but um Yeah, so in terms of like you just said like in terms of like I do this kind of music on my own anyway for the most part. Is that what you asked before? Yeah, like, yeah. Just see, yeah. you know, what, yeah. what, what comes afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. I Jared mean, has I a just... label also called Gigante Sound, and there's a ton of stuff. He's like, Jared's working like all the time on stuff. I am working. The label's sort of like in, in, in hibernation right now. So I'm trying to get other labels to work with, but the music hasn't stopped, which is a problem because I have nowhere to release it. But um, yeah. So like, I, I've been basically like just working on this particular kind of sound that we did in the in the the uh the eclipse um now is like that's sort of my way of working um in the ambient genre and i think any of it could also be translated to talking book too it's all loose and fluid and it can be rearranged and you know anything could be anything and and i work with my friend dom who's the other member of of talking book and so we work together on stuff and it's all yeah i mean it's just it's what we do and so to have it actually do it like for a film and get money for it and put out record that's like that's the dream um and get to like go see it in in a, in a beautiful theater in amsterdam is like it doesn't you know that's the best thing you can ask for i mean for this it's kind like, of music i don't know i mean the, i know all you know, uh, genres. There's no such thing as genre, really, but and they're blurred. But it's a, what's the between soundtrack and ambience? Is it just soundtrack? There's basically because it's been done to pictures, but also, but nowadays soundtracks also become a form of music as, as well, isn't it? So, yeah, is yeah, it a difference? I so. And and the word uh, ambient really has a lot of different meanings too. I mean, yeah. there's there's the classic you know ambient. There's what's called ambient now. I mean, some stuff I've heard that people call it ambient. It just sounds like trance music or something yeah um, it's it's kind of a dated term at this point um i don't know i'm my, my, i'm more like i i don't know how to explain it to people sometimes like just abstract collage music with electronics and because it's not but everything we do it's not straight electronic music you know it's not all synthesizers at all there's a lot of other stuff in there that's that's been mangled and twisted and turned into something. It's not just straight electronics, you know. I'm not just sitting there yeah. with like a modular synth. And there's no way that the, the stuff. And I'm I'm not interested in that music really. I'm I'm more interested in what we do, which is like sort of sample manipulation and layers to create a new sound rather than just turn on a preset and just you know mm-hmm. play a sound that you can. Nowadays it's very available to go and da- or buy a, a pack of ready-made cinematic sounds and just press, you know, the C key and have it just, 
I mean, that's fine, but you, you, I hear it all the time, and I'm just like, you can that's hear not what it. I, there's a mm-hmm. certain thing. There's a sheen on all of that. And yeah, and you hear it. the grit, gristle of real things, like that's with a microphone, for example. There's just a texture that you can't buy, you know. Yeah, you. I mean, yeah, you. I mean, even though the, the these companies were keep trying to chase these sounds so that they can have the the, but it's so cheap. I don't know. I just it's annoying. And so when I listen to when I watch movies, uh, usually in the more like horror slash like psych whatever, like the usually the best ones are the ones where the the music or the sound is just incredible, and um, you could tell there was a lot of originality put into that. And I can listen to it like a like a record. I can put it on in the car and, and drive around and pick my kid up from soccer. And there's like this crazy, you know, shit going on. So I love that stuff. But um, <laughs> um, I lost my train of thought. But that's sort of what I'm always just making music like that anyway, um, for picture or not for picture. So if another just movie like, comes yeah. around. Shit, if she come, if she's like, hey, I got a, the new movie, I can just send her a bunch of tracks and she could be like, oh, I love this one and this one. And then I'm able to go back and kind of tweak those or pull shit away or just use one little part that works, you know? So like, it's just, it's always about like building libraries to be able to use for later. That's sort of what I've, I've been doing really now is just creating little libraries of, of things and trying to file them so that I can remember where they are. That's... And Bill, I mean, you got a ton of like samples and and little things that he pulls out, let you know, out of nowhere. So we're always looking for like stuff that we can use for our stuff that's not just like a synth sound or a patch, you know. Like I think that's really it. it that's where you can kind of pull away from being ambient and just make it a thing that it's not really. It's own. It's its own. It's its own genre, which I like. I like it's. Yeah, it's always crazy. a little fucked up. I don't know how to call music that's just glitch, I guess, is like the old early, right? Like late 90s. A lot of that stuff still translates to me because they sort of take a sound and kind of break it a bit, you know? And like some of my favorite stuff is from like the late 90s, early 2000s of just that digital kind of like breaking down or dub even, right? It's like you're kind of breaking this sound by using so much effects and delay that all your you know all of a sudden the whole track is just a delay <laughs> yeah. it's kind of all the same thing it's just yeah yeah just just creating uh new sounds to create uh new textures and new atmospheres in a sense yeah yeah and i'm not really that interested in sounding super like uh in the now and i don't care if it doesn't sound huge and like massive on this system and all that shit to me it's like I don't know. I don't care. Like I just want it to sound good to me and and just, you know. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit like eating, eating food, you know? You want to you want it to touch you. Yeah. 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 I don't need to go to a four-star Michelin restaurant. Like I I am okay with the place down the street that does it right <laughs> and it's like that's fine, you know? Like mm-hmm. I appreciate all the other stuff, but I don't care if I'm not like in that kitchen or you whatever. Eat that every you know? day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how, yeah. How how different is it working on your own and working with somebody else? Is it when you work with someone else, does it push you into different spaces? Does it cause uh, interesting collisions? Definitely. Uh and I get you know, I worked with different people and Bill uh, is one of them and, and I definitely, you know, we get a I get a lot of feedback. I mean when we work together, especially like uh on other projects, but like yeah, we but we would send each other just sounds and stuff and then I'll trade a session back to him and then he'll be like, ah, this part's kind of like, yeah. And that, and that's great. Like I want, I want feedback. I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, offended by it at all. And actually better in a way. Cause when I work by myself, sometimes you're just kind of like, you know, absolutely. You get- I feel the same. I think it's, I think it's a social thing for me too. It's like, it's the feedback of the other person that kind of takes it somewhere better that you wouldn't have gone. It's always, absolutely. I always appreciate that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 